Hello everyone and welcome back and as you can see we are home it is good to be back I'm pleased to see the cats again it's been a long flight yesterday 14 hours getting back from Tokyo to London stayed there overnight and I got the first train back to Newcastle this morning and over the past 24 hours while I've been doing all that traveling a lot of things has came out the big news straight away, Mark Guy, the centre half in Crystal Palace. The castle actually looks like they're going to get this player in. It actually looks very good. So we're going to talk about that in this video and the updates that happened this morning about him. And of course, we're going to start this video off where we finished the last one. And that is about Newcastle United's match on Saturday, the Salah Cup weekend. Over the past couple of days, it's been open and everything's been in the air about the possibility of the match actually being called off because of ongoing protests and just the safety of fans we do have an official statement that has been released by newcastle city council still at the minute there's been nothing from newcastle and there's been nothing from the from your police but we do have an official statement from the council that gives us quite a lot of information so just to to summarise it, because there's quite a lot on there and not all of it is relevant to newcastle today, but just to summarise the important parts the impression straight away being given out is that the match is expected to go ahead on Saturday. I must state the obvious and say that there was protests happening in Newcastle tomorrow. So tomorrow and Saturday. And my belief is, depending on how the protest goes tomorrow, could heavily conflict with what would happen on Saturday. So let's say the protest doesn't go well tomorrow, something quite bad happens, there's violent behaviour, then maybe Newcastle and the police then will change their strategy or potentially change something around for Saturday. But as things stand, if you are especially a fan that is travelling up for the game on Friday and Saturday, the belief is that the game will go ahead on Saturday. But no from your police will issue a strong statement over the next couple of days to tell Newcastle fans exactly everything that you should be doing ahead of the game. I don't have that statement at this time, so I can't give you any answers, unfortunately. But the information I have based on this statement that has came out from the council is that the game is expected to go ahead on Saturday. Again, this could potentially change depending on how the protest goes tomorrow. Something that is subject to change may I also add to constantly keep an eye on official club statements and just wait to hear more information. But if you are watching this video now and you have children, for example, that you bought tickets for the weekend and you feel either unsafe or you want a clearer answer directly from Newcastle United, I highly recommend you to contact the box officer, just to contact somebody at the football club and to let them know your concerns and hopefully whatever they are allowed to tell you, they can give you a bit of a clear answer and just to inform you on what you should be doing for the game. But as things stand, the game is expected to go ahead. And for those who have any further inquiries they want to make, I highly suggest you contact the cast night via the box office and just to see what you should be doing for the game. But hopefully that's give you a more definitive answer. Again, apologies, I don't have all the answers at this time. I've just given you information I personally have. A couple of days ago, things looked much worse than they are now. It seemed to be a case that Nafumbia Police, whatever they believe is going to happen on Saturday, they can personally handle it, which is why we are in the situation now where the game's going ahead. And Cast Knight has stayed firm and they've stuck to the guns on this one. No from your police is the main key factor though because they've got to have staff members on for the game and they've got to have staff members on at Monument to deal with the protest. So that is the deciding factor for the game being on Saturday. We'll see whether anything changes over the next couple of days or so. But expect a strong statement from No from your police that will tell you exactly everything you need to do for the game. And speaking of the police, they'll also be on again on Sunday the 13th of October because at the Stadium of Light it has now been announced that Newcastle United will be heading there in a women's match. This is during the international break so no excuses guys if you want to get yourselves back to the Stadium of Light. I'm still buzzing there after last season so the opportunity is there now. If you'd like to attend that game make sure you get the tickets when they're available and I think it's hardly possible we could actually bring more away fans to the game than there'll be Sunderland fans there so we have a potential opportunity to show them up inside their own stadium. But hopefully in terms of stadium stuff and the Fumbia Police, you've got a much clearer answer there. We have a statement now that's been issued by the City Council and the Castle Trust and we have some answers ahead of the game. As for transfer news, that is what you have all came here for and I'm so glad to be talking about this one because it is such an exciting potential transfer. The Castle United believes they'll get completed, the club believes they'll get this deal done. And I want to mention briefly, our transfer that we bring in, William Osua because yesterday it's been reported on social media that he's headed into Newcastle to complete his medical. This is a deal that has went through, it is expected to be completed. Newcastle will announce their new signing 
10 million pounds up front and 5 million pounds for an add on for the Sheffield United striker. A young player with a lot of potential, and I'm hoping he kicks on at Newcastle and he'd be a fantastic backup for Isak. He struggled last season at Isak with Callum Wilson being an unreliable player, not being fit at times where he has needed to be fit. Rudy Musua is hopefully that player that will graduate over time, get Callum Wilson a little bit further down the pecking order, and for that player to be a real backup long term for Isak and to progress with the football club. But now, time to talk about another youngster that I'm hoping progresses well if he does join the cast there, and that being Mark Gay, the centre half from Crystal Palace, who has had a phenomenal years with England. Gareth Southgate needed a centre half in because of Harry Maguire's late injury, and Maguire being such a key focal point of our back line for England, bringing in what at the time was an unknown centre half, had a good time at Palace, but hasn't had that European experience or international experience to come in and to kick on for us. And what a, one of the star centre halves of the entire tournament at the Euros. He was phenomenal every single match he played and did not look out of place at all. Fit Southgate's team well. And now at club football, it is a move that Gay wants to make. He wants to come to Newcastle. He likes the ambition of the football club. And if you actually watch the interview that he did for England while he was out for the Euros, he actually said that Newcastle was his favourite away and to go to in the Premier League. He loved the Newcastle fans and how loud they were and how hard it was to play St James' part. So even before he had any transfer links towards him, he was speaking quite highly about Newcastle United. And now that an official bid has came in, this one looks positive. No Premier League teams have went in form so far other than Newcastle. Crystal Palace wants £65 million. Newcastle have had a bid of £60 million rejected. But the obvious point I've just made there is that the castle is willing to more or less reach the valuation that Crystal Palace want. It's a deal that is very close in terms of value and the castle are expected to go back in for a second bid. And the belief is from the castle and from journalists is that this deal, unless a different team comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden decides that they want to bring the player in. As things stand, the belief is that the castle will actually get this deal done. They're going for a second bid and it's believed that the second bid will potentially be matched by Crystal Palace and agreed to, which means that if we bring him in, you are looking at a backcourt of Lewis Hall, Sven Botman, Mark Gay and Tino Livermento. What's that, a combined age of 22 or something. What an incredible, incredible backline we have there. And of course, Fabian Shaw is going to be there as the experienced centre-half and Newcastle's team is looking incredible at that point. Such a solid backline. And he's a perfect fit. Loves a long ball behind. He will help out with his sack. And it's just going to be an unbelievable back line. It's, it's got to be up there. One of the best defences in the league, surely. And one thing that I mentioned in my last transfer video that I felt like Newcastle needed to do in this window, which I haven't done so far, is when we aren't signing the player, is for one or two of these players to actually start for our football team to be marquee signings. He is most definitely ticking that bill. The only issue being is that Potentially £65 million is an obscene amount of money. If it is £65 million, that is our record transfer. That is more than Alexandra is sack. And that is a big, I wouldn't say gamble, because value-wise, you know this player is going to be good. But in terms of spending that much money, it's a lot of money to spend in a centre half. It is a lot. So he has to be playing well for Newcastle, but I'm fully backing him. I've seen a lot of him at Crystal Palace. Fantastic signing. And if you told me at the start of the window that Newcastle would have a marquee signing be from Crystal Palace. I would have guessed Elise. It hasn't been Elise, but I'm not complaining about this one because he feels that good for England, that good for Crystal Palace, where I actually think this is a fantastic deal. We have to get it over the line, of course. We still have to get this deal done. But the belief is that Nicastle will complete this deal. The belief is that Nicastle are going back in for a second bid and they'll either reach the valuation of Crystal Palace or be just below where the teams are happy to accept it. Some issues in the Palace point of view is that Chelsea does have a sell-on clause. So when they are selling a player like Gay, Chelsea have that sell-on clause with the player. So Palace's case, they might want a little bit more money just so they can get a better buck out of it. But the truth is, it is just too much money to turn down for a lot that's in his early 20s. Palace need some sales. So next season, the next couple of seasons, their PSL won't have any issues there. A lot of money is there now. The player wants to make the move. I don't think Palace have much where they can persuade the player to stay. There's a lot of money on the table when he casts who won't pay it and it, it's Palace's best interest to accept a deal like that. 
The only issue Newcastle have really is if a different Premier League team turns up or somebody else starts a, a bidding war where someone is willing to match the valuation Newcastle has put down. But if that doesn't happen, I think Newcastle will say Mark Gay and I think you will become a Newcastle player. And when I say that and when I mention that to you guys, that makes me excited because I think it's a brilliant sign. And we still do have a little bit more work to do. I feel like we've still got to get that right winger in. But if it's a, even a half decent player, I think it's a good transfer window. I think we've had a good time. And Newcastle will look good about European football. Less games to play, no excuses. We go straight out there, guns blazing, and we're expected, hopefully, to potentially try and get back into the Champions League. But it's a big season ahead. And in terms of bringing players in, one of the signs of the window so far, I would say definitely top 10 signs of the window so far. In terms of value, yes, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a rip off or anything. I still think it's a good deal for Newcastle to get it done. And based on potential and what we've already seen of this guy, exciting. Massive, massive coup to bring this one off. And Newcastle are looking ever so close now. So we'll see over the next day or two how this one transpires, but it is looking positive at the minute. Go away from this video and be excited and go away from this video and be optimistic because as things stand, it looks like a deal that Newcastle will get done. And we'll see whether that changes over the next couple of days. But for now, things look very positive. And I'm hoping it happens. I think that's the best way to finish this video off, though, to keep you guys on the bit of an optimistic side there. Hopefully, you've got a lot of information from this video. Hopefully, you're all clued up on what is going on. Hopefully, in regards to Saturday, you all understand the current situation with the Salah Cup. Again, uh, when I make these videos, when I talk you through it, I try my best to be as honest as possible, try my best to give you all the correct information I have at the time. Of course, were a day or two that can completely change or perhaps that the information will potentially be a little bit off. But be as honest as possible, uh, things didn't look great a couple of days ago, they look better now, but that is still subject to change. It's still not guaranteed anything and we still need to wait for further instructions. But from your police will bring a statement out that will hopefully clear up the situation a bit more. But we have to see how tomorrow Newcastle does first because if tomorrow is a bad day in Newcastle, then it, it would not look good for the weekend. So we need to keep an eye on that. It will constantly change. So constantly keep an eye on the news and we'll, we'll see how things turn out. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching. It's going to be back in the UK now. Looking forward to seeing how Newcastle get on. But take care though and we'll see you all in the next one.